commentary, entertainment, sports, news, and opinion. Now, here is Steve Malsberg. Well, you know, I want to be part of uh, making the Republican Party big enough that we're the dominant party, that our ideas win elections, and that we can start to grow this country again. We have so much pent-up uh, capital in this country and ability to create jobs, but it's all afraid of its government now or it's going overseas. you got Pfizer and other companies thinking about going overseas because the taxes are too high here. It's a sad state of affairs when we say, you know what, Canada has a lower corporate income tax. Canada has half the corporate income tax we have in America. America. That's a sad state of affairs. All right, folks. So welcome to the Road to the White House. Each day this week in this time period, we take a look at another possible GOP presidential candidate. On Monday, it was Ben Carson. Yesterday, it was Governor Mike Huckabee. And today, it's uh, Rand Paul. And uh, there he was making, uh, I guess, uh, if not his most recent, one of his most recent appearances on this very show. And joining us once again, I'm very happy to say, always love to talk to the great Dr. Larry Sabato, the director of the University of Virginia Center for Politics. Hello, doctor. Hey, how are you, Steve? I'm great. Thanks for joining us. I really appreciate it on this uh, special segment of ours here. You know, I, I meant, just mentioned that we did Ben Carson, discussed his possible candidacy and, and Governor Mike Huckabee earlier in the week. I'd have to say, um, out of the three, including uh, Rand Paul, I, I think he, uh, Rand Paul is certainly the most likely uh, at least in my opinion, I'd love to hear your take, to actually eventually declare that he will be running. What do you think? Yes, I think that's that's true. You can't predict Carson or Huckabee for sure, but Rand Paul is giving every sign of wanting to run. Uh, his problem is he can't run for re-election under current law to his Senate seat in Kentucky, but some of his allies may try to change that before 2016. Right, and uh, he would, then what you're talking about is if he if he elects to run, uh, then he would uh, he would have to give up the Senate seat and not be able to run for that. If he loses, then he's out in the cold. I wonder. Oh, you know, he once uh, uh, there was a piece on him, a cover story in Newsmax, the magazine, a few months back, and in it he said that uh, he told his wife when he ran for the U.S. Senate, uh, "Don't worry, I, I have no chance of winning." <laughs> I said, "If that's the kind of predictor you are." Uh, you might be in trouble. Um, if he runs for the Republican nomination, uh, the way things are today, tell me what you think his chances are of winning. Well, he, he'd be a serious candidate. He would have an unusual coalition, Steve, in that some of his positions are currently considered outside the Republican mainstream. Now, you never know who's going to be elected delegate in all these states, and we'll see what happens. But he has, uh, I'm not going to call it an isolationist, foreign policy, but he is certainly less eager than most Republicans and indeed the Republican platform to see American military strength projected abroad. Now, that attracts a lot of uh, libertarian Republicans to Paul. Uh, he's also given some other libertarian hints about positions that he may have that other Republican candidates don't. But I think it'll be a very interesting campaign if he decides to do it. Uh, also, remember, he's been reaching out to minorities, which there ought not to be any controversy about in the Republican Party. Uh, if that party is going to win the presidency, it's going to have to be much better with Hispanics and Asians in particular. Yeah, let's put up a, a, a list of some of the obstacles uh, that Rand Paul might face. You you alluded to a, certainly a, a very serious one, uh, which is an obstacle, but it, it's also uh, uh, makes for a very interesting coalition. You know, uh, we had the the cartoonist uh, uh, Ted Rawl, uh, who I spoke with a little earlier, and and he said that uh, Rand Paul is the first and only Republican he's ever considered voting for if he does run for president because he loves the libertarian uh, streak. Uh, within him. So it would be an interesting coalition. But first and foremost, he would have to win, you know, the Repub Republican uh, primary. So uh, when you talk about establishment Republicans, uh, who traditionally certainly are strong on defense, are not isolationist to the extent that Rand Paul is, as you also brought up, um, how much of a, of a uh, albatross is that around his neck in actually trying to get the nomination? Uh, it's a big albatross. Now, it's always possible in the Iowa caucuses. You could have a large infusion of libertarian Republicans showing up, and they might give him a larger percentage than expected. What's hard for me to believe is that once you narrow the field down to two or three, that he would be able uh, to put a large enough coalition together to actually get the nomination. But stranger things have happened.
Whoever thought Jimmy Carter would be nominated? Yeah, well, yeah, stranger things have certainly happened. That's, that's for sure. Um, how about his father? Um, a, a very controversial in, in many respects uh, uh, with his stances uh, uh, in the Middle East uh, with uh, respect to U.S. Uh, intervention around the world. Uh, just say in that respect, he's a little similar to his son. But is his father, uh, who has a huge following, by the way, the former congressman, is he uh, a help or a hindrance, do you believe? Uh, Ron Paul helps his son Rand Paul in fundraising and in the energy of the volunteers that would be needed to run a presidential campaign through the caucuses and primaries. The, the downside is that Rand Paul has got to be able to create a very separate identity from his father for uh, not just the uh, Republican Party itself, but for the general electorate. You know, Ron Paul you know, has his strengths, and, and certainly you you admire somebody who's as outspoken as he is. Uh, I don't think he filters anything through political consultants. But uh, he's not the sort who can win a general election. He has proved that several times. Uh, his followers uh, sometimes ignore the percentage of the vote that he actually got in many of those primaries and caucuses. It wasn't all that impressive. Well, that, let's take a look at a, a, a Quinnipiac poll. I think this is the last one done, head-to-head -head matchups, uh, fantasy matchups, if you will, uh, between uh, Hillary Clinton and some of the Republican possible contenders. And uh, Rand Paul uh, weighed in with 40% uh, against Hillary's 49%. Uh, it's up there on the screen. Again, way too early to tell. Um, they all basically were weighed in uh, uh, within one or two points of each other. Rand Paul, Jeb Bush, Paul Ryan, Mike Huckabee, and Chris Christie. Um, against the Hillary, you know, you talk about uh, comments made. Comments made by Rand Paul, um, with the media being what it is, uh, could really prove to be uh, troublesome as well. Uh, because, of, I mean, let's just take, for instance, um, the civil rights remark, where he said he supports 90% of the Civil Rights uh, Act and he took it back. Um, again, I know how the media could twist and turn words around, but he does speak his mind. He's not afraid to say what he thinks. Uh, he is more, uh, I guess, uh, reined in than his dad. Uh, but nonetheless, will his comments and his policy stances, his remarks about Bill Clinton being a, a sexual predator, uh, will those remarks come back to haunt him in a general election? Well, they'll help with the Republican base for the most part. But you're absolutely right. Uh, for a general election, he'll have to walk some of those back. And more importantly, he's going to have to convince the general electorate, if he gets there, that uh, he has the kind of temperament uh, and he has the kind of restraint that people like to see in a president. They don't always get that in a president, but I think basically we like to see that in a president. So that will be a problem, but that one's a solvable problem if he gets the Republican nomination. He is go he's going to have to come up with a strategy that can not win over the internationalists, because he'll never do that, but neutralize them to a certain degree. And, and yeah, no, that's so right. But you know, it strikes me when you talk about uh, uh, the tone and, and the uh, demeanor of a candidate and, and is he presidential. I gotta tell you, I, 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 notwithstanding some of the things he said, and I like him, uh, I, I, I've never seen him lose his temper. I've never asked him a question or seen him ask a question and then respond where he's lost his temper. He doesn't raise his voice. He's very level. He's very even-tempered, very, I won't say monotone. He gets uh, this emotion in what he says, but he doesn't lose his cool. I've never seen him lose his cool. So I think he's kind of mastered that end of it. Yeah, that's a plus. There's no question about it. Um, he knows how to avoid rising to the bait, whether it's opponents, bait or the media's bait, whatever. So yes, you want someone like that uh, as your nominee, uh, but at the same time, you have to consider a nominee as a package, a package of views, of personality, of background, of character. Uh, and this is gonna be a very competitive uh, race for the Republican nomination. I, I think we're gonna have a big field. Money-wise and otherwise, if he's going to get in, um, I guess no different than most. When would you advise someone like Rand Paul, if he was going to get in, to actually get in? 
it's less a question of when you formally announce. It's more a question of when you start to spend virtually full time raising money, uh, going out on the stump, reaching out. Uh, now, Paul has been very active. I mean, he's clearly done quite a bit already, but yeah, uh, he's he, would have to, he would have to focus almost completely on the presidential race. Yeah. Uh, doctor, always great to talk to you, sir. Thank you very, very much for participating in this. Happy to talk, Steve, as always. Take care now. Thank you. Dr. Larry Sabato, you too, director of the University of Virginia Center for Politics. Tomorrow, the road to the White House will continue, and uh, we're going to take an in-depth look at uh, the possible presidential candidacy of one former governor, Jeb Bush. Right now, I'll tell you, Give Me Five is next, right here on the Steve Malsberg Show on